Been trying to keep everything right on schedule this morning, so at this time it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, Ms. Donna Crable, who is our Director of Education and Marketing. And Donna has headed up the team that has put together the festival and the symposium, and she's done a phenomenal job with her team. So she's going to be the mistress of ceremonies, and she'll be running the program for the rest of today. So please join me in giving Donna a nice round of
we can all the time. For one thing, uh, Levy and Brian and I are field biologists. Uh, we learn what we learn most of the time by being outdoors, uh, where the various creatures are that we're, uh, we're trying to learn about. Uh, so we're not always in the office. And much of the documentation that we have uh, on what's happened here at the garden with these eagles, uh, I've asked frequently, uh, what's the most significant thing that's happened? Well, one thing stands out amongst everything. That was a photo that y'all saw about three weeks ago. Uh, two purple banded eagles with their talons locked that were three years old out of this nest here at this garden. Carrie Stanley. <laughs> two three-year-old eagles out of the same nest uh, were able to find each other, but even more remarkable but that someone was there to photograph and record it for us. Otherwise, we would have never known it happened. And that's happened several times. I mean, there are other events, uh, significant events like that, that have happened, but that really stands out. Uh, just the chance that that would happen and the chance that it would be recorded, I mean, it's just remarkable. Certainly, the websites that have helped support us, like the main website uh, operated by Judy Baxter, particularly in the early years uh, when we first started the webcam, and uh, many of you uh, came to know about this particular uh, operation, this project here at the Botanical Garden through the main website. Today, uh, if you want to see the great photographs that the photographers are producing, you go to the Norfolk Eagle site that's operated by Ann Sherling. And uh, you can see it's been a real team effort. Uh, the presentation I have put together for you today <coughs> goes back to the beginning, beginning here at the garden. Uh, not necessarily the deep beginning because none of us were here when the Eagles got their start in life. But this particular pair found their way over here after an incident that, that happened in uh, December 2002. Uh, and as a result of coming over here, all the excitement uh, that uh, circled around that, the all the coordination that it took, uh, a little bit of acquiescence on the part of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the uh, Department of Game and Fisheries in Virginia uh, to be a little bit uh, easy with enforcing the regulations that would allow the public to have access to what was happening at this uh, new nest. And this, this pair was first noticed by uh, the grounds foreman here, Joe Foreman. Uh, he called me in December of 2003. I've been watching this pair of eagles over on the Low Creek Reservoir. And I could tell that they were uh, moving from one place to another, but I had no clue they were coming over here. I thought they were just going back to their former nest site, which no longer had trees at that particular, but just going in that location. I had no clue they were coming over here. They're actually working on two nests. Why they decided this one was better than the other, you'll have to ask them because I don't know. But anyway, this is the first effort in December of 2003. These are the first sticks uh, that were being put up in the first nest. And thankfully, Joe Foreman uh, had those photos. I've gone through three different computers, four different programs, and even though supposedly the data gets transferred from one computer to the next computer, sometimes it's not there. Or I don't know how to find it. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, thankfully, two people have assisted me in finding uh, the photographic evidence of the early days, and that's Joe Foreman and Shelley Fowler. 
So these are the first sticks coming into the nest. Another shot of it, the male and the female. The nest getting a little bit bigger. This is a male in those early days, and we don't know for sure how old he was at this point, probably six years old, maybe seven. We don't know if he was a first year mating, uh, breeding male, because we, he's not banded, and we don't know where he came from. We know where he ended up, but we don't know where he ended up. He's still here. And this was the uh, first lady. And the 2004 <coughs> nest season, this is uh, uh, the uh, female in the nest that first season. <coughs> Here's the first two chicks. That first year we had two chicks in the nest and thankfully uh, uh, Shelly was able to find one of her photographs of that. I've got them somewhere, but I don't know where they are. <laughs> <laughs> I think I still got them, but Shelly's got hers. So this is Shelly's photo and I usually wait until the last picture to find this thing. You can see one up here and the other one down here. I'll use that more often now that I know what it is. Whoops. That thing went backwards. Why did it do that? Okay, so that's our two fledglings. This is what it looked like when the nest first got started. You can see it up here. Whoops, the red dot. There we go. I was at point of the <laughs> So you can see that's that's that first nest up there in the tree. The second nest ended up over here, and the third nest ended up back here. So within a hundred yards in a triangular shape is where the three nests ended up being. The 2005 season started. Kind of an interesting thing. You've probably seen this photo and versions before, but the uh, garden had some bales of straw brought in for some project here at the uh, <laughs> garden, and they didn't get to use it all <laughs> because uh, the eagles found it too, and uh, they, they took it in and lined their, their nest with it after they got some sticks. Oops, the other button. And this is that male in that 2005 season, the female in that 2005 season, same ones of course. They had one chick in 2005. They have had two eggs. Uh, we didn't have a camera at that time, uh, but some of the actions of the female indicated she may have laid two eggs. But since we have no photographic evidence, we can guess that uh, we know it produced one chick. Very dark bird. And here's a bird up here learning to branch. Probably nine, ten weeks old at this age. And over here. And one of the adults, I think that's a female, standing guard. And in the nest tree, this is, I think, a day or two before the bird actually fledged and left the nest. And stretching those wings out, building up those pectoral muscles. So, you know, if you can't fly, when you leave the tree, it, 80 feet, you're in trouble. And we already know that because one of the birds did that, as you'll see. Very dark. Uh, Brian, uh, Brian, in his talk last night, talked about how chocolate brown, how dark brown the birds are. Not actually black, but chocolate, dark chocolate brown. And this is the bird meeting the nest, May 30th, 2005. And there was a group of us here, Shelly was probably one of them, um, trying to find out, no, the bird has got to land someplace. And we were running like crazy, trying to find out exactly where is that going to be up in a tree. This is the very first WVPC interview with Joe Flanagan. Joe and I have a long history. He first interviewed me back in 1980 for a trail. Uh, piece that we're doing. And over the years, he and I have probably done 35 or 40 interviews, including those here at, at the Garden. So we've become pretty good friends over the years. But uh, this has become a real life project for him. And uh, to not be able to do that would really be a shock for Joe. This is 
is uh, Libby and Reese. Um, do you guys mind if I post your presentations on YouTube? Yes, that's fine. Reese, okay? Yep. Thank you.